for experiment nine, stoichiometry of copper two phosphate formation. I'm going to do this in two parts for part A and for part B. So we'll do two separate videos. So the first thing you want to understand in this lab is what we're doing. And what we're doing is we're working with this balanced chemical equation. We have two, whoops, two sodium phosphate. plus three copper chloride, copper two chloride, forms, see how my handwriting is getting better? Just as I spoke. So for both part A and part B, this is the balanced chemical equation. Now a couple things that are they're in the lab manual, in the background, the molar masses for these, the, these things First of all, this, these, everything here is soluble except for the copper phosphate. So the idea of this experiment is you're going to do this reaction and you're going to determine the sodium, the copper phosphate stoichiometrically. A couple things. A lot of ionic compounds absorb water from the air and they'll stop and they form what are called hydrated salts. And it affects the molar mass. It doesn't affect anything else. So it's in the background of the lab. But just so you know, these are the molar masses you want to use. The way that's written is it's the way you name it, not that it's, that's a big deal, is you name it the compound sodium phosphate prefix hydrate, and there's a dot there. So this would be sodium phosphate dodeca for 12 hydrate. Molar mass is 380 grams per mole. So make sure you use these numbers in your calculations. The copper 2 chloride is a dihydrate. And the only way to know the hydration is to look on the label. That's an eight. And the copper phosphate that you're gonna make uh, is a trihydrate. And that's gonna be 434.6 grams per mole. So make sure you use those molar masses. Now in part A of the experiment, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be given an assigned amount of the sodium phosphate and the copper chloride and you're going to make copper phosphate and you're going to calculate the percent yield. Percent yield is the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. The 100 doesn't change your sig figs. The actual is what you got from the experiment. So when you actually do it and you mix the chemicals and you weigh your product, that would be your actual. The theoretical is from the stoichiometry. That's what you calculate. All right, so I'm gonna erase all this. So give yourself a second, you can hit pause. I'm gonna go through part A. All right, so I'll keep these molar masses over here, but let me just erase this part. So what you're going to be given, you're going to be given data, but I'm just going to go through some sample calculations with data that I'm making up. So the numbers I'm using are not going to be the same numbers you're going to use. All right, but let's say in part A that you weighed out, um, so you weighed out point, oops, where is it writing? There we go, point nine. 974 grams of sodium phosphate and 1.0216 grams of copper chloride. And let's say that when you were done, you actually did the process, you actually got um, 0.5554 grams of the copper phosphate. So this is your actual yield. So to calculate the theoretical yield, we need to do this. We need to figure out what the limiting reactant is and figure out how much copper phosphate we should actually get. So you can refer to the lab manual, talks about this, but uh, also your lecture notes, and depending on your lecture instructor, people do this different ways. All right, but the theoretical yield is on page 139. It asks you to give that number. So the way we do it, the way I do limiting reactant problems, is first we're going to find out the number of moles of each substance that we have. So we have... 
0.9974 grams of sodium phosphate. And we use the molar mass. Use that 380 number because we want because that's what we're actually using. And so that means that we have um, 0.002624 moles of sodium phosphate. You like the way I just did that math in my head? That's because I'm smart. <laughs> Okay, similarly for the copper chloride, we have 1.0216 grams of copper chloride, and we use the molar mass. Which means that we have 0.0 zero five nine nine two five moles of the copper chloride. Now to determine the limiting reactant what we do is we pick one of the reactants and find out how much of the other that we need. So I'm just going to pick the sodium phosphate and using the balance and it's arbitrary using the balance equation I know that there's three moles I need three moles of copper chloride for every two moles of sodium phosphate, which means if I'm going to use up all of that sodium phosphate, I'm going to need 0.003936 moles of copper chloride. So then what I do is I compare what I have to what I need. See this? And you can see that I have 59 and I need 39, so I have excess copper chloride. That means that the sodium phosphate is my limiting reactant. So then what I do next is I'm going to use my limiting reactant to answer that to find out how much copper phosphate I should get. So I have use the moles that I have, 002624 moles of sodium phosphate. I know from the balanced equation that says mole. There's one mole of copper phosphate for every two moles of sodium phosphate. And then I know from my molar masses that there's 434 grams of copper phosphate per mole of copper phosphate, which means theoretically I should have formed 0 0.5702 grams of copper phosphate. That's my theoretical. And then finally, I'm going to squeeze it in down here. The percent yield, in this case, is my actual over my theoretical times 100, which in this case, my actual was given to me up here. That was from the actual experiment. My theoretical here, 0 0.5702 grams, well times 100, 100 does not change the sig figs, so that means I have 97.41%, and that would be the percent yield. All right, so this is part A of the lab. What we're going to give you is we're going to give you these two numbers, and we're going to give you this number. So we're going to give you starting amounts of sodium phosphate, starting amounts of copper chloride, and we're going to give you uh, the, the uh, actual yield from the experiment because you guys can't actually do it. All right, so that's part A. You can go back and forth and use this video as reference.
Stay tuned for part B 